guys, I am Chris Kaler and I'm Amber Fossum Kujin and today we're back with you for Vinland Saga Season 2 Episode 9. Last episode the retainers were jealous of our crops mm. and they destroyed it. So Einar and Thorfinn were uh, understandably really angry. Uh, Thorfinn uh, was more calm because he understood too that they were slaves and if they did anything to the retainers it was going to be bad for them so I mean, he, he calmed down Einar. In his mind he doesn't have a right to be angry because he did the same to other people. As in like, he spread injustice and stuff, so now whenever he gets treated like shit, it's kind of like it's deserved. Well deserved, yeah. But that's not how things work, man. Like, you, you have a right to move on. Like, he's trying, like he's, he's ad acknowledged last episode that he's basically empty and he doesn't know how to live without his anger and his hatred mm -hmm. for Askeladd. And he doesn't know if he can change, but Einar was saying, like, you've, you're already changing, man. You're already different than what you used to be. So that's a good start. So, yes, he did feel angry about the crops, because that's the one thing he created compared to everything he destroyed. Yeah. But he, he tried to stay calm. And then they were uh, intercepted by the retainers who kept insulting them, treating them like calling them slaves and saying that their, their crops didn't matter and they Your were bullshit. Your food would taste like shit. Yeah, so Einar got really angry and surprisingly it's Thorfinn who hit <laughs> first. Um, he was surprised too, but uh, that started a fight and now he's getting flashes of what he's been forgetting, like the woman who helped him out and, and he betrayed his father and what he was telling him back then. So. Maybe being hit in the head by a retainer was what he needed. <laughs> so this is where we are. Let's jump in this episode and see what they have in store for us. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these and check out our Patreon for the full length reactions. All right, let's go. Are we dead? This is Vinland? Looks like it. <sighs> Wow, this is so weird to hear him talk like that. Oh, what he could have been. Oh, no. Really? This is weird. His voice is so free. <laughs> no uh, light, no burden, pushing him down. Oh. So he didn't fight back. Is he dead? I thought he fought back. He looked dead. <laughs> well, Einar protected him then. Don't <laughs> oh. wake up. Please do something. <laughs> Help your friend. He'll never stop. Oh, Isa reminds me of Askeladd, by the way, with the spirit behind it. Are oh, you running away, bitch? They can't win. I hate the situation. I expected Thorfinn to be the one dealing with this, but I'm proud of Einar. For his defense, he got hit by a shovel. Yeah. I like how he's, he's saying, we won. Because, I mean, it was a battle of, of status and morals, and yeah. he didn't give up. They ended up leaving. We won, but at what price? Meet your dad! Aww. He's not happy. Wasn't a dream, buddy. The one you spilled? Yeah. Judgment, man. It's like he's in the in-between, and this is the judgment passed by his father. Who he has become, uh. and the things he's done. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Face the guilt in order to heal. <laughs> oh. Younger dad. Who also went through this? Smarakata. <laughs> 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 <laughs
That's a true warrior. Doesn't need a sword. Mm. It's such a powerful message. I see Thor's with his own guilt too. The people he killed him. Climb, my man. Ah, that's why. Oh shit. Uh. You can't drown anymore. Climb up. Get the light. Ah, uh, shit. You have fucked up dreams, man. Those who have lost themselves in that anger and that insanity. What they dream of, it's hell. Uh, uh. Like, should you truly aspire to go there, if this is what it takes? Uh. That's Bjorn. Yeah, hello Bjorn. Lost himself, he became a berserker. Climb. <laughs> kind of misdream him too. Hmm. <sighs> Funny that he's not one of them, right? But he's still there. He got himself here, but he's aware that he got himself here so he can stand on a higher ground and just look at the insanity. But he's still here because he killed to get there. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's, it's good! That's even stronger. The the difference to what Thor's has been saying. He's starting to reach out. お前の中の器は一度空っぽになった。今は何が入ってる？また戦士だ。任せて人を殴った。また戻ってきた。ここの住人だ。手が限界なんだ。情けない。No, the fact that you acknowledge it, you are growing. His victims. Dude, even dead. <laughs> you bring advice. A well of wisdom. Brought down here as casualties of this madness. Maybe they're trying to get out too? He'll be a new man when he wakes up. <laughs> this kid breaks my heart. <laughs> That's a good step in the right direction, though. Thanks, man. <laughs> I love that he's throwing himself in the madness to allow Thorfinn to get up. Oh, man. As that, you were such a huge part of our lives, seriously. And it's gonna be hard because he's gonna be like dragging yeah, everyone. Dra dragging with you. 
And this day, yeah, there's no leaving that behind. Doesn't mean you can't go forward. Dude! <laughs> oh, fuck. I've missed Asuka, seriously. Hey, it's a different kind of wake up. We are going on the path of healing, man. Yeah, there's light. The light is there. Reach for it. Keep reaching for it. Oh. Help him. <laughs> That's not the time to look at him and be like, we have no enemies, they know. <laughs> I don't think you will uh, like it. I don't think having no enemies means never fighting back whenever something happens, but no, it's just that it's complicated. We'll talk about this. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah. As much as I love the discussion of no enemies and, and like fighting back is not a good thing, I kind of enjoyed it. <laughs> mm. なまえも知らない人たち。何の恨みもない人たちよ。なのに今日。もうこれっきりだ。二度と人を傷つけない。生まれ変わって償いをしなくちゃ。you reached him! In a way, he's right there! Like he did back then. Like you are doing now. Mm. I'll do the punching then. I don't really get it. <laughs> it comes down to how do you describe a warrior. Thank you. Well, oh, finally... Yes! <gasps> yes! Thank God we f he found something. But they are not gonna get punished for hitting you. And you leave them alone. I wonder if they stole the button and just. <laughs> He knows how the world works, but he's not forgetting that. <laughs> Keep learning. <laughs> yes, man. There's life in his voice. There's purpose in his eyes. He is being reborn. <sighs> we will never be the version we saw in his dream. No. It wasn't the in-between because of what we went through. But we can learn to live with it and be at peace with it. It's such a beautiful story. And I think I, the fact that it's anime, it's a TV show, and I think it's genius because when we watch stuff, we're used to being like, yeah, fight back, right? Shonen is about fighting back. It's not... Is it a shonen? Does it, like, define... Mm. Is, is, it, it, is it defined by, by being a shonen? I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> but still... We're used to watching shonen, we're used to watching shows where, you know, superheroes who fight bad, but it's never good to do bad, right? It's never good to, to hurt people, but when you're, you're being hit, when you're being put down, you kind of want to root for them to hit back, right? Like, so it's interesting how last episode we're watching Thorfinn hit the guy in the jaw and we're like, yes, finally, like he's felt something. And then this episode is all about how he feels bad about having hit a guy and having been thrown back down in his, in his precipice. It's because he got led by his... Emotions. Uh, emotion, but his, his impulse, which is bad. Kind of like... Clear. Well, yeah, that's the thing. That's why there's a big difference between... And I said it in the end. There's a big difference between just having no enemies and just letting other people bully you for the fun of it, right? And I, when I say that, I mean, like, Thors didn't just let Askeladd kill his crew and hurt his son when they were attacked at the beginning. I mean, he did not kill anyone on Askeladd's crew. No, he but just, he, he just incapacitated them, them. Yeah, he protected his loved ones. He did what was necessary. He didn't feel good about it. It wasn't about a satisfaction, right? It wasn't about following his need to hurt others. 
right? He didn't let anger take over. He calmly took care of the problem so that his, his followers were safe. Mm. He stayed in control. When you look at those people that were down there in the blood, they have no sense of self, right? Bjorn is this, it, it was in his uh, berserker form, right? Kind of like Ascal was saying, there's no beauty in how they fight. It's all about they are beasts, right? They're beasts fighting each other. Well, that's how they ended up there, right? They spend their life doing that. I really love how he thought it was Valhalla at first. And I'm like, is it Valhalla? Because I mean, no. this is what... No, but if you <laughs> oh, think about it... It's not supposed to be. <laughs> but if you think about it, this is what's necessary to get to Valhalla. You need to die on a battlefield by being a warrior so that you can feast with the gods. I know. And once the moment comes for like, now they're going to be there to... I know like what Valhalla is. If I remember correctly. I thought it was interesting that he compared it to Valhalla because it's like supposed to be this big reward for having lived the life of a warrior and dying as a warrior when in fact it's just that's the life of the warrior. That's what you put yourself through thinking you'll be rewarded with Valhalla in the mm -hmm. end. You lose yourself, your sense of self, right? Like you abandon yourself to this insanity, this need and this love of violence And at this point, it's not, it's not about who you're doing this for, because you're doing this for yourself, right? You're mm -hmm. not doing this to save others. You're doing, the, you're doing this to scratch an itch that you created. Like you env envy, what, yeah. <laughs> you envy violence and you spread violence, you spread death everywhere and it, it's insanity. And Thorfinn was stuck in there, like Askel had said, but by the way, missed him and his morales, I mean, man. Just the fact that he was down there with us in our subconscious yeah. prove that he uh, let a huge impact in our mind on ourselves. Because it, it's all in Thorfinn's mind. Like we can take it as the truth. We can take it as uh, a vision or something, but it could kind of like whenever he sees his father, we can take it as it's his father's ghost talking to him, but truly it's always, his, it's, it's his subconscious, right? He's always known. I mean, it's, uh, it's the angel and the devil on his shoulders. His father is basically, is conscious in him what you're doing is not right you should aspire to something bigger something nicer something uh, the guy in inner peace basically his father was stuck in that abyss and he got himself out and he dragged with him his victims and he and and, and, and you know just the same the same as Thorfinn is doing right now my, my ears are so <laughs> clogged right now like I can hear shit yeah kind of like Thorfinn is dragging his victims out of there it's kind of like he's freeing them Because they became casualties of this madness when he killed them. So by taking them with him, he is answering their pleas. He is saving them from what he did to them. They're never going to feel that. Like, realistically, they're dead. They're not going to, you know, know any of this. But for him and his conscience, because he's always going to be dragging them with him, that doesn't mean it's, it's going to stop him from going forward, mm -hmm. right? He needs to deal and face the guilt in order to reach the light and reach the place where his father is, which is out outside the, sure. the precipice where he has given up on this madness and this violence mm -hmm. to finally be free. And it's represented by Vinland too. Like it's, it's this new beginning almost. Because Thorfinn is like, Ascada was saying, like you were lucky enough to become empty. You let go of that anger. You left all of that in, in, the, in the hole and he was kind of stuck halfway, always like trying to reach up to, you know, reach the light and reach his father and then sliding down because of the the guilt right yeah it's always going to be a part of him it's always going to be an uphill battle unfortunately but that is his true battle a battle to live with that on his shoulders keep going forward and that's why i was saying it's about like when you ask yourself what is a true warrior and what is the meaning of this episode and stuff it comes down to how do you define battle how do you define warriors according to To the culture, according to Vikings and stuff, a warrior is someone who goes on the battlefield and, you know, gets honors and, and, and creates a legend and fights back. And it's about weapons, it's about strength, it's, it's about that. It's this representation so, of a warrior. About what you can get for yourself while you're fighting other people. Well, you're definitely. If you're I mean, reaching you're not, for Valhalla. You're not, you're not fighting for a bigger purpose. Well, if you're going yeah. for Valhalla, but if you're reaching for Valhalla, you're, you are doing this for yourself, it's not for mm -hmm. others. There are reasons to fight, and this is why, like, it's not the uh, the ultimate way of, of thinking, because sometimes you kind of have to do something, but there's a big message in saying, like, to 
search for violence, to search for, for this purpose, thinking that this is the best version of a warrior you can be, will only spread violence and stuff. And just like Thorfinn, whenever he dreams of him killing someone, it ends up being Einar. That's someone's child, that's someone's friend, that's someone's brother, right? You will be spreading violence. Even though you think you might be doing this for the right reasons, mm -hmm. what you leave in your path is still destruction, right? So it'd be great, by the way, if, if the world all believed that the, the true warrior was someone who has no enemies and stuff. Unfortunately, that's not how the world works. That's why we'll always need, unfortunately, people to, to fight back, right? But it's a beautiful message to be saying that life's purpose is about your own battle, but it's not a battle on the battlefield against people because no one deserves to be killed. No one deserves to be like treated like an enemy. You have no enemies. I mean, you, you say only those like, that you create for yourself, I guess. And everybody's human. Everyone has a father, a mother, brothers, mother. <laughs> Everyone has people that they cared about. Everyone has the same right to be on earth and to live their life, basically. Everyone is human. And, I mean, if you decide that you hate someone enough that you want to kill them, then you put yourself on that path, just like Thorfinn did with Askeladd. You are the one creating your own enemy because you decide to have that person as your enemy. Yes, it's true. Like, when someone like Askeladd kills your father in front of you, it's definitely difficult to be like, nope, okay, I, I, I choose to move on. I choose to move forward. Mm. I'm not saying forgive people like that. I'm, I'm saying you don't need to destroy yourself thinking that you're going to get revenge. Because what, what, what is it going to do? It's, it's just going to destroy you more. Well, what is the thing, though? I forgive, but I don't, do not forget or something like that? It depends. It could be I forgive, I, I forgive, I don't forget. It could be like I, I choose to move forward, but I don't forgive you. Could be that, too. Maybe. Kind of like, I will never forgive Askeladd for killing my father, but I choose to move forward and not let the anger destroy me and bring me down that hole for myself. Because it takes a lot of energy and time to hate someone. <laughs> and like, we're talking like very specific situations, but overall, this is a culture about, well, the culture. This is a, a time where, you know, these guys dreamt of being warriors. They wanted to go to war, right? right? It was an honor for them mm -hmm. to go and fight. Thor's is saying, you shouldn't dream of that. Like, this shouldn't be your goal. Because all it, all it does is create pain. Mm -hmm. Life is a battle in itself. It's already hard to survive. Focus on your freedom. Focus on your goals, your, you know, your, your future. Focus on that. And for Thorfinn, his battle is about being reborn. It's about carrying that guilt, carrying his past, but moving forward. That mm -hmm. is going to be a battle and he's going to be a warrior. If he achieves that, if he gets that, or he keeps going forward with that, he will become a true warrior, and he will have no enemies. Because he'll let go of the anger. In any case, it was a really good episode. <laughs> oh, it felt I'm nice. Trying to have a conversation with my uh, ears like that is really difficult. I'm sorry. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, like I said, I think it's interesting because we're so used to you know, reacting differently when we watch shows about fights. Like, we want people to fight back, and we're like, yeah, kick him in the ass! Like, you know, fight back, Thorfinn! And then I the mean, whole point is about him not fighting back. I mean, no. I mean, I don't encourage characters to fight and kill their enemies. No. But I encourage them to stand their ground, fight for what is right, fight for justice, fight to protect the people that they cared about. You know, but when, yeah. when you're living in a world with injustice and people are trying to push you down, I'm going to always root for people who, uh, who stand their ground and just, uh, I'm going to stand for myself, I know my words, and you can push me down further. The world will be difficult and it will judge you and it will treat you like shit because sometimes like circumstances happen and yeah, you end up a slave and retainers like want to push you down. Yes, stuff like that happens. It's never, it's not your fault. Yes, I will never also be mad if like someone like Einar or Thorfinn decide to stand on their own two feet and be like, no, I don't want mm. to live like this anymore. But then there are better ways to get out of the situation. Like you keep getting back up, you keep fighting back. The world will be angry, the world will be ugly, and it will treat you mm. like shit, but it comes down to you. Do you abandon yourself to the insanity and just you know roll with it? 
or do you stand back and fight your battle against the world who is unjust? Mm -hmm. This is that. Because Thorfinn, there's one, like, yes, you can defend Einar, you can go to the master and fight back against the retainers. You don't have to punch one in the face in anger. That's the difference, right? Violence doesn't have to be the answer. Let's go with that. You can fight back. You don't always you don't have to fight back with your fists. <laughs> True. Violence isn't the answer. That is the message, right? Because like, yeah, it, it, it turned out okay for them, right? People were fighting for them still. Like they were good people. They have friends on the farm. Some people go out there, like Sverkel teaches uh, Thorfinn how to, how to live. Uh, uh, I forgot the master's name. Teril, Teril? No. Anyway, the, their master cares about them enough to give them a job and an, an opportunity to, to get out of there. Yeah. Look at the bright side and try to solve your situations without abandoning yourself to violence because all violence mm. will bring is more violence. Yeah. So sometimes, like, find, you know, you need to find another solution. And they kind of, he, he punched a guy and it turned out okay. But what do they do now? Like, they just, they keep farming. They just, they keep getting back up and they keep pushing. That is their battle. Would you say that you shouldn't look to start fight, but you should be the one to end it? That depends. Kind of like Thor's, like I said, he had a good reason for you know, fighting those guys back in season one. But, it, but he didn't kill them. He didn't, he didn't start that fight. He, he, he ended put, the he fight. He ended the fight, yeah. So, yes, when, I mean, when you have no choice, I'm not saying lay down and take it, but you shouldn't choose violence as your, your scapegoat, right? As your answer to everything mm -hmm. whenever something gets difficult. And like Thorfinn, when he was a kid, he lost his father. Instead of dealing with his grief, he turned to anger and he condemned himself to a to years of of slavery of his own doing by mm -hmm. following Ascalad around and spreading anger and violence everywhere death and now he's got a huge pile of people that he needs to carry with him his battle is even worse now but that's because back then he chose violence i think I, I, as a summary like as as a point <laughs> i think this this makes sense, like, as, you know, what this yeah. episode meant. And I really, really love, like, episodes like this, where it's all about metaphors and, and seeing into a, per a character's mind and having Askeladd mm -hmm. being like, yes, uh, I love how Askeladd was in that madness, yet just elevated still, because, like, he got himself there, and he, he never lied about that. He also admitted that he, but he, was, he was aware he was of it. Yeah, but he was aware of it. That's why he's not lost mm -hmm. himself to this. And it is sad, but... The fact that Thorfinn believes that he never grows, he used to, to um, become angry at Ascalad when he said uh, to him that you never learn, you're still that same idiot kid that you used to be back then, so you never learn. Well, well Thorfinn still believes that he never learned. Well, I will say no, because he is aware of his wrongdoings, he is aware of his shortcomings. Well, now, but if you, you can be aware of something and never make a change. No, but, no, but he. Life he, isn't like this, though. Like basically, he's on a path to recovery. It's gonna be like this. It it's normal. It's okay for him to make a little like uh, a little progress and then go down a little bit, as long as he doesn't completely give up. Mm -hmm. It will be t it'll be tough because he's got a lot to deal with. But he is aware, and he's willing to make a change. He's reached so he for is that line. So growing. Well, that is yeah. That that yes. Mm -hmm. Back then, he was too angry to acknowledge that Askeladd had a point. But, but that's, that's the exact, that's what he was saying, right? That's what Ascalad was saying back in the day. You attack me with no strategy. You attack me by losing yourself to anger. Like, if anger takes over, you're not going to win this fight. Mm. And you're completely, like, you're facing me and your anger is telling you you can defeat me when I have so much more experience. This is stupid, kid. You're going to get yourself killed. If I, just, if I wanted to, I could kill you. But he, he became a beast back in the day because he chose violence and he chose mm. anger instead of being calm about it. You need to be a master of your own emotions. <laughs> In any case, we're gonna end this here. I'm gonna go take care of, uh, well, it's getting better, but I need to go take care of my ears a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode with us. If you want to see the next episode right away, it is on Patreon already. You can check it out. The link is in the description below. And if you don't, the next one will be on YouTube next week. So we're gonna see you then, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.